so I did it again. I recorded a video a tutorial and I forgot to turn the microphone on. So anyway, this is basically a tutorial for beginners. Uh, I had a few comments letting me know that I've gone a bit too fast in some places and uh, like with marking menus and stuff and uh, the curves weren't thick enough and the CVs weren't thick enough um, to be really that visible on my tutorial. So I'm just creating a quick tutorial now to show you all the basic tools before you go on to my Audi tutorial. Make sure you've watched my first one which is uh, alias free tutorial alias day one because that will show you um, how to set up your shelf and marking menu so you can follow along with this. And normally I lost the shelf to that but all the tools I use in with this shelf should be on your shelf. Okay uh, first things first I can't remember what I did. This is recording. Yeah, right, what are we going to do first, Adrian? Come on. Jog my memory. Uh, this At this moment, I'm just talking a load of shit, but it didn't record it, so you won't ever get to hear. You can just listen to me talking about myself talking shit. Right. So, yeah, I think I'm talking about uh, building a curve first. I'm talking about it, but not doing it. Oh yeah, I'm supposed. I'm going to show you how to set the thickness of your curves and CVs if you want to change them. So you go into Object Display and you scroll down to Draw Style and just copy exactly what I've done on this box. If you want your curves to be thicker and your CVs to be thicker, uh, keep the surface boundaries single. You can change the whole thickness to quad. Keep patch precision as dotted. Uh, keep V holes as solid and then like I change that CV icon to a big X rather than a small X So you should be able to see it a lot better in this video The whole thickness Yeah, again change everything that you see on here to, to um, your yours if you want similar settings You want your curves to be thick, right? Let's start with an edit point curve Which I showed you in the first video but I'm going to show you again now just in case just to jog your memory um, I'm also going to go a lot slower with the marking menus and just kind of get used to to working smoothly um, I'll explain every time I did use the marking menu um, and to get your marking menu up you hold down shift control but I'll show you that in a minute All right build a curve uh, here's the marking menus so control shift and left mouse button shows you those marking menus control shift and middle mouse button shows you those. No sorry this is still left mouse button. It's basically all my pick. I can say pick nothing, pick CV, pick curve, pick object, pick surface. Middle mouse button is the move um, marking menu so you move, uh, select pivot, um, scale, center pivot and all of that and then the right, oh it's still going. There you go, scale, center pivot, rotate as well. So center pivot is good because it just basically snaps the pivot to the center of the surface. Uh, rotate and then non-proportional scale I don't really use. What the hell? Um, non-proportional scale I don't really use. Query edit I do use a lot and I'll, again I'll show you that. I did show, I did mention it in the first tutorial. And then also select template which is in the uh, left mouse button marking menu which I do use a lot as well. And then right mouse button is uh, it's the extend tool, but the main ones I use are intersect and project. Uh, I do actually forget to go over intersect in this tutorial, but I, I did mention it in the first one, so as long as you've watched that, then you should have everything covered. Untrim and trim I use in the marking menus as well, but they should be in your shelf if you don't want to use them this way. Right, so first things first, edit point curve. Select edit point curve and now yeah make sure it's three and chordal. Now when you build it inside view and you want to build in space, hold if you want to snap it to like an area on the grid, you hold down the alt button, alt yeah button and just use the left mouse button and it will snap to where your mouse is closest to on the grid. So that's just a good tip to use. Uh, then pick nothing using the left mouse button control shift and then pick CV left mouse button control shift holding down control shift and select the hover over CV and then using the left mouse button select the CVs then you can again mark your menu move which is middle mouse button control shift so select the CVs hold down control shift 
yeah and middle mouse button and hover over the move icon and then just move to move the CVs up and down you use the right mouse button uh, this is in left left orthographic view to move them forwards and backwards you use the middle mouse button and to move them in space you just use the left mouse button you move them anywhere you want if you do this in perspective however it does change so to move the CVs in so select move to move them forwards and backwards you use the left mouse button it'll move it in X to move it sideways in Y you use the middle mouse button it's just getting a better angle so you can see so in Y middle mouse button and up and down using the right mouse button uh, now I want to build another curve and snap it to that curve to do that you can either build it in space and move the CV to snap to that CV or you can snap directly to that curve as you build it so there I just held down control no sorry held down alt and snapped to that point and that curve is already snapped um, but you can also say if you build a curve in space use the align tool so pick nothing uh, no, so pick CV so you can actually do it without the align tool you can just pick CV and move it to that curve there so pick CV select move and hold down control alt and the left mouse button to snap it to a curve and, and just slide it anywhere along as long as you're holding down the control alt keys you can slide it up and down the curve so I've just slid it all the way down to the end and then the final way of doing it is using the align tool which I'm trying to find here and I forget where it is there it is so yeah you can either align it positional tangent or curvature let's move the curve the CV back to where it was let's say they're not attached so this is a good way of just snapping one curve or one surface to another curve or surface you can use G0 which is positional uh, select the curve you want us you, you want to manipulate uh, and I want to yes yeah, snap it to that curve so I select that curve first and snap it to the, the um, destination curve and there you go that's now G1 you could then select up it to G sorry that was G0 you up it to G1 which is tangent and G2 which is curvature Um, and then when you maneuver, maneuver that first row of CVs it will affect the curvature of the following curve uh, and then I'm talking some crap here oh now I'm talking about having that curve aligned to two curves either side of it so I'm going to build a curve I'm going to hold down control alt so I can slide the CV along and uh, so it's already snapped to that um, curve and now I'm going to sorry align that curve to that curve which yeah you can do but generally I don't if there's like a curve in between two curves I'll align the middle oh you piece of crap something's gone wrong please don't do this Okay, it just went a bit crazy, but that's okay. Let's carry on from where we were. Uh, right, what did I? A bit further back, a bit further back, a bit further forward. A bit further back. There we go. Right. Uh, now I'm checking the curvature between. So using the curvature, I'm going to go back a little bit. So just a little bit far ahead. Okay, yeah, so I've just aligned that curve to the middle curve. Now we use the uh, curve curvature tool so you can kind of judge how the curves are reacting to each other, how they're relating to each other. You just select each curve individually and it'll create this curvature comb. And they're not too bad, but yeah, even though they're aligned G2, there's still a big break in between each curve. So to, to, manip to fix that, you can either manipulate the CVs on each curve like this so oh, I'm not doing it oh yeah what I decided was instead of aligning that end curve to the middle curve I'll 
align the middle curve to both outer curves. So to do that, because there's only two CVs there, I need to up the CV count to five so we can have G2 on both sides. You need two rows for G2. So each each curve that it's aligned, aligned to needs two curves. So that's why you need to up, up it to five. There you go. So now there's two rows of CVs for each curve. Uh, yeah, so I'm just explaining that there. It is annoying because in real time I explained it better. Right, so now I want it aligned. Oh, and I forgot to accept when I changed the CV count on that middle curve. So just make sure you up the CV count and then click accept. Now they're already aligned G2, which is good. The curvature comb looks not bad at all. Annoyingly, the um, curvature comb on the right side of the screen is staying very small, so it's difficult to tell. So I just had to try and like delete the lo delete the locators and just select those curves again. When I up the curvature comb, it's still yeah, it's good on that side, but on this side, it, you can't tell. But yeah. I assume there's a break there, so I, in order to fix that, I'm, you can manipulate the CVs on the right curve to change, so that's going the wrong way. So basically I, I realise I need to move the CV up in Z, not down, oh, no, that's forwards, sorry. When I move it forwards, the curvature comb goes down, which we don't want, so I move it backwards, it doesn't work, I move it up, move it down, there you go. And now you can see it's starting to relate to that inner curve, curvature comb. And I explained this uh, in the Audi tutorial as well. So it's getting closer, getting closer, but it's not perfect. Um, yeah, really close there. What is going on with this screen? Is it playing up again? So that, yeah, that's not bad at all. But to make it perfect, you would change the curvature to G3 instead of G2. In order to make it G3 you have to up the CV count to 7 because G3 naturally uses 3 rows rather than 2. So you have to make sure there's 3 rows available for each side you're aligning to. So let me show you. Now you go into align, edit, now what am I doing? I'm showing the curvature game again. Uh, I'm showing it so it will update live when I G3 align it. So let's see. Edit, align, G3. So yeah, up that to G3, there you go. And now that's made a nice, much smoother curvature comb between the two. Up that to G3, and there it hasn't worked so much, but that's just because you need to slide that back. If for some reason it just went a bit mad sometimes when you do a line G3. Some of the CVs do go crazy, you just have to slide them back into a, like a more uniform position. Okay, I can't believe I'm having to do this again. I literally just finished and realized I didn't record anything. Right, another tool is the blend curve tool. Um, if you don't have it open, you can find it in palette, uh, in the curve section of palette, double click that, and it'll create a little separate toolbox for you so you can get rid of the palette and just use this. Uh, you can then blend between the two curves without having to, so the same way you would build a curve and snap using control alt, but without you don't have to align that curve, it's already pre-aligned. The only problem with it is, distribution of CVs is never very good so it's only really a tool I use for sketch modeling um, if you did want to fix those CVs you just have to realign it anyway so you may as well just build a normal curve yeah check the curvature as well curvature came is not good <laughs> like really not good I don't know what alias is thinking when you build a blend curve in why can't it just do it uniform I never understand but anyway so yeah just stick to using that for sketch modeling don't use it really for a class if you ever get to that stage. Uh, yeah, what else? I really hope this is recording. Let me just check. Pause. Yeah, it is recording. Good. Okay, let's play. Okay, yeah, so now, um, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm showing you the curve fillet tool. So if you have two curves perpendicular to each other, um, instead of, so yeah, those are just like two curves randomly snap to each other and you want to build a fillet between the two. Oh, here I'm just explaining, get used to 
because I'm moving quite fast again, I realise with the marking menus, just get used to picking CV, selecting nothing, or picking CV, moving it, and then picking nothing. They're the main marking menus I use. Here I'm explaining if you have two curves perpendicular to each other and you want to create a fillet, you can do that the same way you create a fillet you, for surfaces, but you use the curve fillet control tool. Change that section to chord, the same you would do with the surface fillet. Uh, make sure it's on G2 curvature, chordal length, and we'll just try 10 for now. I think it ends up being too small. And just select each curve and then click build. Now that fillet is quite small, so you can just up the value to whatever you want. Here I have it to 100. Update. And also you can get those curves to trim back to that um, curve fillet by clicking the trim type at the moment it's off just select automatic update and that has now trimmed those curves back to that curve fillet so it should they should all be curvature with each other which is a nice little tool the coach game isn't perfect this way you just have to G2 or G3 align it and manipulate the CVs to make that curvature comb flow better but it's a good quick way of getting a curve blend in between the two curves that you want and it's it ends up it's a nice clean it's basically a cleaner version of the blend curve all the CVs are uniform which is good uh, what's next the duplicate curve I showed that quickly in the first tutorial as well but yeah basically instead of copying and pasting a curve oh no sorry instead of copying and pasting it's basically copy paste but in one in one tool it just does it for you you just select the curves you want to duplicate and it will copy and paste them uh, what next oh the um, curve section tool so if you want to like trim curves back so you've got curves overlapping and you don't want to like snap the ends to each other you just want to like trim them all back to each other which is much more efficient there's the curve section tool so yeah instead of doing this long-winded way use the curve section tool so you just pick the curve section tool pick the curve you want to trim back select go and then pick the curve you want it to trim to same with the other curves trim them back select curve select go select the curve you want to trim back to so there you go it's all nice nicely trimmed and they're all positional you can do that with curves and surface as well uh, and then the next tool is the stretch curve tool so instead of like individually moving CVs to a different curve you can you can stretch the curve all at once and the CVs will all move together which is really handy so yeah select the stretch tool which you can find in your shelf and then just the same way you hold down Control alt and slide the curve along the destination curve to a point that you want or you can just move it to anywhere in space I don't know what I'm doing here oh yeah and you can pick either end of the curve as well so if I want to stretch that end you pick that side and stretch that side but yeah I just want to use this end and slide it along anywhere you want okay yeah looks like I'm having a lot of fun with that stretch tool hurry up next Uh, what is next? Well, now that I've already got a square there made out of curves, I'll show you the square tool, which I did show you again in the first tutorial, but let's just do it again just so we've got a good workflow. Square. One, two, three, four. Make sure, make sure you pick them in order, that just uh, helps. Uh, yep, use your diagnostic shade to shade it up. If you haven't got the diagnostic shading box, you can find it in object display. And yeah, that's the square. Next, uh, I think I copy and paste the square. I just want to show you now how to, same with the curves, how you snap a surface to a surface. So you can use the align tool, or you can do what I did with the curves and select the CVs. So here, for example, yeah, like I'm moving, I'm manipulating the CVs of the square. Sorry, the curves that have created the square. And now I just want to like show you different ways of snapping this, my second square to the first square. So here I'm just showing you that I'm hiding, just 
just getting that curve out of the way to hide it. I've got a um, shortcut, but you can find it in object display. And it's the invisible tab there. If you click invisible, the curve will go away. Here I'm debating whether that is actually the case. I thought it might be a different tool, but it is that, yeah. And then to make it visible again, you just go back to object display and select visible. But for now, we just want to get that curve out of the way, so make it invisible. Now I want to snap this square to that edge. So there's one way you can do it. You can make the square one by one and move those CVs. Just, just snap those CVs to that edge of the square all the way to the edge, all the way up and down using the control alt tabs again, keys and left mouse button. Same with that one down and now that is positional to that. However, that doesn't always work because this square, the first square might not be flat. It might be curved on all edges like this and then you cannot attach a 1 by 1 square to a 5 by 5 square which the first one is if I just show you I should turn on the CVs on the first square so first you've got to up these CVs to 5 by 5 so they match the original square and I can't just snap it to that edge now like it won't work but I can snap it to the CVs of the first square and that will then become positional. So it's kind of similar to polygonal mod modeling. If the CVs are snapped to each other, then the surface edges are snapped to each other. So you do this by selecting the CV, selecting move, and then holding down control. So here I'm holding down alt, but you don't hold down alt. <laughs> you hold down control and click the left mouse button close to the CV you want to snap to. It doesn't have to be like directly on the CV, it can just be close. There you go. And it snaps that CV to the closest to the closest one to your mouse. And you just gotta make sure you snap every ed C V edge, every C V on the edge of the square to the to the C V on the edge of the other square. And that'll make it positional. Basically you're doing what the align tool does, but manually. And there you go, that's position aligned. G one G zero. Now to get it to be curvature or tangent, you just have to use the align tool. So let's say yeah, those cur those CVs are back to where they were, and you can just snap using the align tool to that square, which is much quicker. I don't. There are occasions where I have to do it manually. I don't know why. I think it's yeah when ADIS is playing up, but most of the time you just use the align tool, and there you go. I've set it to G2, which creates a nice flow. <laughs> Pick nothing. Uh, and here I was trying to figure out what to do. Oh yeah, and I was just going to show you the so the flow of surfaces. So before I showed you the curvature comb for the curves, there's a way of showing a curvature comb across surfaces, and it's called the cross section manager, which you can find in your control panel. So you basically select the surfaces, select cross section manager, and then you tick the correct box. So here in this case, it's it's um, the Z box and make sure that that box on the right of it is turned on as well and it'll show you the curvature combs across the surfaces. This is really helpful for A-class modeling. You want surfaces to flow nicely. You want the curvature combs to flow nicely along them. So in order to fix that curvature comb, we want it to be G3 or we can manipulate this, the, the CVs that are in G2 already. But in this case, I think I just up it to G3 and now that curvature comb flows nicely. Yes, the surface has changed. So you do have to play around with that to make sure it's exactly what you want. But the curvature games flow nicely now. I then up to the CV count to seven. So I, yeah, because when you go G3, generally up your CV count to seven because it needs three rows rather than just two. Uh, yeah. So yeah, now I just kind of want to get rid of those Oh no, I'm, now I'm creating a, I'm going to put these surfaces on a layer and create symmetry. So we have something to build in between. So assign it to that layer and then tick the symmetry box. And there you go. We have a nice kind of symmetrical shape. Either side, get rid of those curves because they're not needed anymore. I've deleted the history anyway. And just move that into position you want. And now we'll use the skin tool to build in between those surfaces, which I did show you in the first tutorial. But it's good to go over it again. You just select the two edges you want to build between and it'll build a skin for you. Uh, you can then add the crown value just to give it a nice 
round feel. And then do the same on this surface. Crown, proportional crown, up. And you can see there's quite a clear break in between those two. One of the main reasons is because the CV layout on, the, on this surface is only five by five. Whereas the surface it's built to is, is seven by five. So you have to just up that seven by five. So, and now there's less of a break. There's still a break there, but it's much better because it flows with the surface that it's built to with a nice uniform CV layout. Um, but as I'll show you in a minute, it's still not curvature, even though the surface on the side is G3. The surface that I built above it is not. Uh, and we'll check that now using the evaluate tool which you should be able to find in your shelf if you can't if I forgot to show you where that is you can find it in the palette uh, under evaluate and this is a point where I can't find the evaluate tab which is really weird because it is there I'm just tired I guess so search for the evaluate tab <laughs> eventually you'll find it and search for the uh, service continuity tool Where is it? Come on. Yeah, see so it did take me a long time to find the evaluate tab, I don't know why. There it is. Not that one, that's curvature tool, it's right there in front of you. There it is. So drag that into your shelf if you haven't already got it, I'm pretty sure I did show you where it was. And then check G2, and that is not even tangent. So you just have to select the align box, the line tool, sorry. Yep, and then just align it G3 there. There you go, that flows much better. And then you can check the um, cross section across, uh, but on that surface, this time you've got to tick the Y box, and that flows really nice, which is perfect for A class modeling. This is what you want. Uh, next. What do I show you after this again? Oh yeah, I show you a uh, rail, I think, or a draft, uh, a rail. So I'll just yeah, get rid of these cross sections now. To do that, you just select the surface you want. I don't even think you need to select the surface, actually, you just untick the boxes. But here, I thought you needed to select surfaces. Anyway, I build a curve off of that edge, uh, up it to five, and I'll align it. Or up it, keep it at three then. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm moving it in Y. Why don't I just align it? Anyway, build a skin, flip the crown. Oh, here I'm just changing, adjusting the draw position on the quality because the curves were very jagged. So to fix that, you got quality and the draw position tab and just up it to one. When it's down at zero, you get a, yeah, like a zigzag line. You don't want that. Just, that's just graphical error, it's not like that's not actually what the curve's doing. Right back to the skin, query edit. So it brings up the history and flip crown. There you go. Uh, align tool, just align this surface, the middle surface. Oh, that's why I didn't align it here, yeah. because I wanted the middle surface to be aligned to the outer surfaces, because that's just kind of good, good practice. Uh, yeah, and then like I said before, sometimes when you do G3, the CVs can go a bit crazy, so you just have to slide them into the position you want using the arrows and the left mouse button. Uh, yeah, that's seven, that's fine, flows really nicely. Obviously the surface down the side of that surface no longer flows because yeah, that has been aligned to a different surface. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here, what am I doing? Turning the CVs off. Yeah, so I've got CVs as a short, like CVs as a shortcut, making them visible and invisible, but to turn them off you use the control panel. Um, I don't know what I'm looking for here. Oh yeah, toggle model. Before I was getting confused, why can't I see anything? Why can't I see my CVs? It's because the model was toggled. That just allows you to see the model without any wireframe and curves in the way. It's just nice sometimes to, 
to do that. But yeah, here, turn CVs off, turn cross section off. So you just have to untick those boxes and untick those, and the cross section should go. But annoyingly, I accidentally reticked it. Untick, there you go, gone. Uh, select object, turn CVs off, and the next tool. I'm going to show you is just getting rid of those side surfaces is the rail tool so I showed you that before you can use a monorail or a bi-rail monorail is just one by one so one generation one rail yep select generation curve which in this case is the edge of the surface it thinks it wants to be curved you change that to position and there you go you have a nice simple surface going up in Z with history you can do the same with the by rail tool. You so then you have control over two two rails rather than just one. Make sure generation set to one, and then rail curves set to two. Select generation curves, and then the two rails. And there, it thinks the generation wants to be tangent. Change that to position, and you have a nice rail, which you can manipulate with history. Here now, I'm showing you. How to build a by rail with curvature off of another curve, I think. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. align those curves to that edge. Go to the rail generation curve one, and then rail one, rail two. That set to position. Position has failed. The reason it's failed is because there's only five CVs in that row. We need to have seven because the center surface has seven rows of CVs. Uh, so scroll down your rail, uh, by rail control, set it to curvature, and then up the rail degree V, generation degree, sorry, to, to 7. And now that should flow curvature, which it does. The CV layout itself is a bit like wonky, and that just comes with you manipulating the CVs yourself uh, on the surfaces to fix that. But overall, like the highlights are alright for now, though, this will do. Um, next I'll show you the draft tool, so just get rid of that rail, basically rails like that are pretty pointless because you can just use the draft tool and it will do you do it for you pretty uh, instantly, it's much faster. So make sure the angle is set to zero, or in this case we're going to go in Z, but you can go in any direction you want. So that's basically built exactly what I had before, except I only had to click one edge, I didn't have to click multiple edges to create a rail. Just click the generation curve edge and it created a draft form. You can do it in X, you can do it in Y, but Y it won't work very well because it's because of the edge that it's uh, built from. And you can also, instead of doing draft, you can do it normal, so it'll create a normal to the surface hit from every angle, which is great. If you set that angle to 90 degrees, it will do it. Um, it will do it, it will build it adjacent to that surface, and that is now um, perfectly tangent across that um, edge, which is a good little trick. Um, but drafts are always um, only tangent because they're always five by one, or like they only ever have one. Oh, they're a flat, basically a flat surface. So it will never be due to curvature unless you manually do that yourself and up the CV layout and then, then align it. So yeah, it'll always only be G1. Uh, what else? We still need to show. I still need to show the fillet tool again. Um, I can draft down a nice little snow angel there for the tree. Let's. Uh, maybe we'll keep that. What am I doing? Turn the CVs off. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. Oh, template, I'm showing you the template tool. So yeah. In order to hide surfaces and not get rid of them, you can just template them and then select template using the right mouse button marking menus. And then yeah, untemplate it by selecting template again on the object display. I have that as a shortcut on mine, but the long way is this um, yeah, through the through the object display tab. Uh, this is yeah, the reason I wanted to get rid of it is to show you the freeform blend tool. You basically just select like you do skin, but it will blend 
at G1 curvature and you can also up that to G3 and it will up the CV count for you and yet this time on the right hand side the CVs are quite uniform but on the left hand side they're not and yeah this is the problem with with the uh, freeform blends like the, dis the CV distribution is never that good and now obviously there's a break between that surface and the outer surface because it's behaving slightly differently so you just have to then realign the outer surface to the middle surface if you want but I think I'm going to get rid of that now anyway so I can show you the draft and fillet tools Am I going to get rid of it? Come on. Yeah, select surface. Nope, I'm just going to rotate around the model a bit. Show it off. Nice little fairy for the tree. Uh, yeah, this is so annoying because I went over everything. Um, but it didn't record. Alright, draft tool. Yeah, here we go. We're just going to draft down off these edges. Make sure it's set to Z. And flip the surface so it's going down. Get rid of this. We can either template it. Yeah, I templated it. I always template because then you don't ever lose anything. You can just, that's basically just a good way of hiding it. Some people put it on a layer and select invisible. I just think templating is faster, the workflow. Get rid of those curves, we don't need them. Turn these CVs off. Yeah. And now let's build a fillet. Use the surface fillet tool. Make sure it's set to cord and G2 curvature. Uh, bring that down to about 100. Make sure the form factor is set to 1. And then select those surfaces all in order. If you don't select them in order, face, um, alias will get confused. I'll show you now that if you select it, they, it turns yellow and it's, that one doesn't update to pink. You need to select them all in order so they all stay pink and then select the other surfaces opposite that will become yellow and then click build. Now make sure the edges are set to edge line, not extend and Yep, again, like I showed you in the first tutorial, it hasn't trimmed the edge away because this surface is built over the center line and is on a symmetry layer. Both edges are mirrored onto both sides. So even though one edge, the, the bottom edge is trimmed away, the top edge isn't. So that untrimmed edge is mirrored onto the other side. So in order to get rid of that, you just have to slice it down the middle. So create a curve right on the center line, holding the uh, Alt button I think as you create the curve you hold down the Alt button. Another way to make sure is if if you're slightly off the center line, so here I'm way off the center line, you select the CVs, you select move and then you hold down Alt, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I got it wrong actually on this and then I corrected myself. I always get confused between Alt and Control but just double check like zoom in, hold down Alt and move it using the left, right mouse button and it will move it into place and snap to the center line right and then you, you project you select surface I went a bit quick there so I'll start again select surface um, project using the right mouse button marking menus select the curve and select project and then select surface or just trim you don't even need to select surface you can just select trim and and then click on the surface you want. This is a quick way of doing it. You can literally select both surfaces, then select trim, or all three surfaces, then select trim, and then highlight the area you want to keep. So there you go. And then this is when I've realised there's actually a gap down the middle because I didn't I didn't uh, hold down the right keyboard um, button key. <laughs> uh, so you have to go back to that curve down the centre line. Just double check. Like you can see there it's not directly on the centre line so select all the CVs again and make sure they're snapped to the centre line using I think it is <laughs> the control tab so hold down control and then click the right mouse button close to the centre line and they'll snap into place there you go so now yeah that will be clean across the center line, there'll be no gap. Delete construction history. Another thing I'm going to show you is the trim convert tool. 
Oh my god, what's going on? So untrim that, get rid of those curves on surface where the uh, fillet is. And I'm just gonna like trim curve at that back. So basically it will bring this like the CVs to that curve, curve on surface edge. It'll create an edge where the curve on, surf curve on surface is, which is good in some cases, especially for the ball corner tool, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. So yeah, instead of trimming it, it works the same way, but it creates an edge where that curve on surface is. So it will build the surface to that center line there. Uh, and if you have like a CV off the center line, you can do the same thing that you did with the um, curve on the center line earlier. Just select that CV, hold down control. I'm pretty sure it's control, otherwise it's alt. And then mouse, like, right mouse button close to the center line and it will just snap it into place into the, like over the center line and it will be should be tangent it should be curvature over that center line now only because i didn't move any other cv rows it should be curvature yeah. if you move the other cv rows it will lose curvature so try not to do that um what next okay yeah and also because i didn't manipulate any of the cvs on that surface it should still be cut g2 to those those fillets so you can just project the edge of those fillets onto that surface and trim it away and then just double check g2 to see if it's g2 and it is uh, and then yeah i'm just going to show you how to use the ball corner now so i'm going to close off this end with the draft down uh, i'm going to extend it through so it's close closer to that other surface because I want to build a, a fillet across there. You could build a fillet all the way around that edge but I'm not going to do that for the sake of showing you the ball corner tool which is actually a lot cleaner than building a fillet all the way around that edge. So yeah now I'm explaining you don't actually have like usually I would trim that surface back but you don't need to do that because uh, alias predicts that yeah, you want that that fillet to go around that edge so it will just automatically do it for you so you select the two surfaces you want to fill it around uh, I just want to do it over those two surfaces I don't want to go around because I want to show ball corner build make sure it's set to extend on that end because you want the fillets to shoot through each other when you're building a ball corner do the same on this side make sure it's edge aligned across the center line uh, and then yeah it's not quite intersecting enough so to make sure it is just extend that fillet through using the, the arrows make sure it's still curvature on those edges which it is but just in case it isn't I'll show you what to do uh, let's pretend that edge is not curvature so I'll, I would then untrim so yeah let's pretend that's red not green uh, delete locators yeah. <laughs> untrim uh, sorry I deleted the history then untrim that surface delete that curve on surface yeah select curve on surface delete it uh, and then use the align tool again but instead of doing edge align keep it at g2 you don't need fillets to be at g3 g2 is enough uh, instead of edge aligning it I project align it so you project the sorry you select the project circle there yeah select the edge you want to, the same as you were going to align any other object and then just select the surface you want to project align it to and it will create a curve on surface for you which you can then trim back and now those fillets are all intersecting each other very nicely and we can create a ball corner so yeah, select the ball corner tool uh, the start edge ratio and then the edge ratio always vary so don't worry about that for now select the fillet every fillet all three of them select go and then select the surface you want the, this full corner to run around so yeah any of those and it will flow around there uh, I'll select this surface to run around and then select go it didn't build it but don't worry at this point uh, some red arrows appear you have to click left click the red arrows on the opposite side to the surface you want it to run around so this one and this one sometimes you have to rotate around the model a bit to find they can be hiding and then select go and yeah 
it's built it in um, two of the edges aren't tangent so that's another process that you need to go through you eventually get really fast at it like I do it's just getting used to the workflow so you now have to trim convert those fillets back so there's a clean edge at the ball corner and there as well and then just align it align it uh, tangent one two and make sure that sits to edge and make sure that the blue arrows are slid all the way down so on this side they're not and you can see that because it's got a double edged arrow now it's a little way along and you'll find that it probably is no longer tangent on the uh, adjacent edges so yeah there you go it's lost position there and it's almost tangent there so that's good we can we can manipulate that manually but this lower one we'll have to just trim convert this this um fill it back again so there's a clean edge there as well use the align tool to just get it tangent there we could do curvature as well but just it's easier if it's just all g1 and here we're going to manipulate the cv so i did i think i showed you this briefly in the first tutorial but it's good to show you again select the cv and then pick this tool down here which is called transform cv you select that and then you hold down spacebar. Holding down spacebar will, it will make this marking menu appear and just make sure that that tool there is highlighted and the sens sensitivity is set all the way up. And you just then manipulate using the left mouse button to slide the CV up and down in space until it pops into place like that. And now it's G1, which is really nice. Um, when it's G1, you only have to manipulate the first row of CVs for, away from that edge. When it's G2, you have to manipulate the second row of CVs away from that edge, but you've got to be careful because it might end up popping uh, a perpendicular edge out. So let's say we want it to be G2. We then have to manipulate this row of CVs, but if we manipulate um, the CV there closest to that edge, then it might pop it out of tangent. So let's just manipulate that CV, the second row in from both edges. Uh, and that means it won't affect tangency on the on the um, edge to the right. So let's do the same thing again. Select that tool, hold down spacebar, so make sure that NUV is highlighted, and then use the left mouse button to slide it into place. And there you go, it's now curvature. And that's just a nice manual way of getting things to flow. If they're already very close to being curvature, you just you just um, slide the CV slightly, and they should pop in. Okay. So we've done ball corner, what else? Profile blend. So say you accidentally lose, you somehow lose your fillets, like that's one good example of when you use profile blend or freeform blend, but profile blend I think is a bit more control. It's like building a square, but with more edges. <laughs> so in this case, there's six edges, uh, four, four parallel edges and uh, two adjacent edges. So it's like a hexagon, I guess, got six edges. Uh, you select one side first, no matter, like all the edges on one side, so there's two edges there, you select that side, and then you select the opposite side, all the edges on that side, and then accept, and then select the adjacent edges. So one, two, and they should turn red. I think here, I don't think it turns red, it's just because the, yeah, the edges are so thick now, but that is actually red, and then select build. Also, you need to make sure that both sides are set to curvature, if you want them to be curvature, update and that's built a reasonably nice fillet like surface in there yeah. uh, but that ball corner will no longer be tangent now if you check so at the moment you can see it says tangent but that's just the, the tangent to the, the original template so you've got to delete locators uh, and then reevaluate that edge see it's not even positional that's so all you've got to do there is basically just re realign it. There it's curvature though, which is nice. Don't have to change anything there, just the ball corner needs changing. Also, I realised that this profile blend isn't set to Bezier, so it's basically built spans in there, which I rarely use. Like, it's a bad habit to get into spans, so just get rid of the spans by bringing down max spans to one, update. 
his lost position there, but that's just because Bezzy has turned off. So now, in order to get Kovacic back, it creates two surfaces, which are then four. It has created them weird, like slightly off the original edges, but for this case, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's still curvature, which is good. And there, it's still curvature, and here, it's not. So yeah, like I said, I'll just realign it. And realigning to there would mean you do have to then realign probably every edge of the ball corner to bring it back. But it's all just part of the process, and you get used to it and you end up becoming really fast, so it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so what's next? I think I've done everything for surfaces now. I guess the offset tool. Oh yeah, tube tool. So that I just use for creating like curves on surface offset from an edge. It's good, but it does create tiny curves on surface sometimes, which can be annoying. It's also not that good at going around corners, so yeah, make sure chain select is turned on because everything's curvature, it flows all the way along the edge, regardless of how many edges there are, which are good. Uh, set the radius to 50, just to show you a big, nice big uh, tube, and there, look, as it goes around that corner, it's done a pretty terrible job, so you just have to create your own corner. Probably use the curve fillet tool, which I showed you before. Uh, here, I've accidentally selected the curve section tool. Select the curve fillet tool which is this one. Select the curves on surface like you would with the curves. Set that to, I don't know, 20 and build. And there you go, it's built a nice curve. Fill it in there. I thought it would trim the curve on surface away, but it doesn't because it's not a curve on surface itself, it's just a curve. So you just have to project that curve onto the curve on surface and then trim those curves on surface back to that fillet using the curve section tool. There you go. So yeah, it's created a nice curve on surface which you can use to like trim away, create shot gaps and things like that. Uh, another tool I think I'm going to move on to now is the offset tool which I did show you again briefly in the first tutorial, but I'll show it again. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm just showing here that I use untrim in my marking menus, not on my shelf. Select surface, there you go. And let's offset all of these from each other. Edit, offset, uh, to change the distance. I always keep it um, these settings as they are, so linear and active view and then you just slide the distance tab along to determine how far you want to offset your surfaces from it. You can also do minus values, so it goes the other way. Uh, so minus 100, there you go, offset in, but we'll just keep it at plus 100 for now. Offset, and there you go, it's built a surface normal to those original surfaces. So it does slightly change it, and it will mean that they won't, they more than likely won't be curvature anymore. There you go, it's not even tangent. So you just have to realign that, those new surfaces and I think a lot of the time you will find that the CVs are a bit weird, so you do need patience with the offset tool. And it can be annoying. And trim it and realign. G3, look, so the CVs are going a bit crazy there, just slide them back. Make sure they're distributed evenly. Same on this side. And there you go. Uh, here I'm talking about yeah, distribution of CV, so you always have to make sure that they're distributed evenly because it can lead to further problems later on, especially when you're trying to align one surface to another surface, it can affect both of them then. So yeah, so say if this was now, like, I'll then trim this. No. Yeah, so right now, because the CVs are well distributed, the highlights are really nice. When the CVs are warped all over the place, the highlights go crazy. So yeah, like let's say this middle surface was aligned to this surface with warped CVs, it's just gonna go crazy. It looks kind of cool, but yeah, it's not what you want. So always make sure your CVs are, are relatively even, even with curves as well. Like I do explain this in the Audi tutorials as well. 
flexi. Yeah, so you can move them around, but make sure they're an even distance apart. You can skew them slightly, but never too much like that. If you go too much, it's time to build another curve, really. Um, yeah, it just makes it more difficult to control. Uh, so yeah, the final thing, uh, like there's a few more evaluate tools, like evaluating the angle of something, which is good for when you're working with engineers. Uh, to do that, you use the control alt button, hold the control alt button down as if you were, oh yeah, so if you can't, haven't got the angle tool on your shelf, you can find it palette under locators, as I just showed you there. Right, so to measure the angle, you hold down control alt and slide all the way to the edge of that first curve, all the way to the outer edge, using the left mouse button. Then, then you do the same again, but you slide to the inner edge where the angle is hitting, and then and then to the other curve, slide anywhere down the curve to measure the angle, and there you've got 102 degrees. So yeah, it's just good for things like, I don't know, measuring the angle of a vent on an interior, like which way it's meant to be going, and you know, for engineering data. But you don't really have to use it that much. Uh, the other tool I showed in the first tutorial was measuring curve to curve. So if there's two curves in space and you just want to measure the distance between the two, you select the curve to curve deviation tool, and just select either curve and it will give you the distance minimum and maximum uh, and then again you can do that for curve to surface as well so yeah delete locators curve to surface and it will give you the distance between the curve and surface really easy and really useful other tools I showed you I can't be bothered to show again like the dynamic section tool but they're the main ones I use um, so that's it yeah any if you have any any questions or anything else please do leave a comment in the comment section and i'll try to answer it using maybe another short video or i'll just reply to your comment just yeah let me know uh, and get used to your marking menus try to come up with a good workflow especially between um pick cv pick object pick nothing and move like it's really good if you just get used to doing that over and over again and it will help you a lot with the uh with the next tutorials and don't forget to always save your work uh, because alias crashes a lot right so yeah good luck with the next tutorials uh, and let me know if you have any questions <laughs>